Is everyone ready? Everyone's good? Mic check? So I'm Jamel Ine. I'm the spokesperson for the Tampa Police Department. We're here today to discuss the murder in the case of the 14-year-old, a 14-year-old Alexia Alexander. Here to speak on the case today, we have Deputy Chief Calvin Johnson, State Attorney Andrew Warren, and we also have Alexia's mother here, Ashley. We also like to thank uh, Patricia, Derek, and Jay. Rise up for peace for their support for being here today as well. Yesterday afternoon, the Tampa Police Department, the U.S. Marshals Task Force, arrested 44-year-old Ronell Walker and charged him with the premeditated murder of 14-year-old Alexi Alexander. On May 6, at 3.58 in the morning, Tampa Police Department responded to a 911 call that a female lay unresponsive in a vacant field in the 100 block of Flora, Nebraska. The witness who called reported hearing gunfire and went outside and saw a young female laying on the ground and called 911 for help. The officers responded to the scene, and from that moment on, Tampa Police Department worked tirelessly to bring this individual to justice. We have zero tolerance for gun crime, especially when it involves the life of a young juvenile in the city of Tampa. From the minute this investigation started, we partnered with our community, our state attorney's office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and the U.S. Marshals Task Force to identify and apprehend the killer of Alexia Alexander. I want to thank our homicide squad. Those detectives worked tirelessly to bring this person to justice. As a parent, I know that this will never take away that deep sense of loss that Ashley and her family feel that their daughter would never come home to them again. As a police department, we hope this arrest provides some sense of closure for the family, knowing that this violent criminal is behind bars. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday's arrest of the man who murdered Alexia Alexander is a step towards justice. You've heard me say this before. The state attorney's office and our law enforcement partners place the highest priority on solving and prosecuting violent crime. Violent crime poses the greatest risk to community safety, and we will do whatever work is necessary to solve these cases and put the criminals who prey on innocent people behind bars. Today, you're seeing the results of that work. Tampa police detectives poured over evidence for the last two months, following all the leads, working meticulously and relentlessly to solve this case. And my office stood side by side with them throughout the investigation, strategizing, obtaining search warrants, and searching for answers. The partnership between our two agencies, as well as the other law enforcement agencies involved in this case, continue to produce results for our community, and you see that today. Now, this is still an open and ongoing investigation, and so today I can't release all the information that we have about the case, and I may not be able to provide additional specific information. But we are still encouraging anyone with information about Alexia's murder to come forward. This case is going to be prosecuted. This case is going to be complicated. But TPD has done great work to make an arrest and to put our office in a position now to prosecute Alexia's killer. We're going to take over the prosecution of this case. We're going to go where the evidence and the law take us, and we will seek justice for Alexia, for Ashley, and for all of Alexia's family and friends who are devastated by this crime. Thank you. First, I want to thank God. I want to thank God for this day. I pray 
and pray. I pray that as they would come, they would get him off the streets. I thank God. I thank God to tell him let's go. Temple Police Department detectives. I thank y'all. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The community, the tips, I thank you all. I thank everyone who was able to bring this person to justice. I thank you. It won't bring my baby girl back, but it will give me some peace that he's off the streets and a little bit of closure. This is just the beginning. This is our beginning. Understand that this is still an ongoing investigation. And at this point in time, we're going to open the floor for questions. Yes, go ahead, sir. Um, the premeditated part of it that we have so far throughout the investigation is based on the evidence that we have regarding what occurred that night during the incident. From the evidence that we've gotten so far that led to the day, um, it led us to that charge of premeditation. Yes, part of that was on a media release. Information that we got from the vehicle and DNA helped lead us to where we're at today. It's still an ongoing investigation. I don't want to get into those details, but just understand that part of the investigation that we got led us here today. I don't want to go into too much detail on that. It's an open investigation still. And please understand the nature of this case and what the family has to deal with. So I don't want to go too far into the investigation, but um, it's still an ongoing work in progress as far as work in this case all the way through prosecution. Sure. So um, uh, Ronnie Walker was charged in 2009 with murder in the second degree. He went to trial uh, and, and uh, he was convicted of a lesser charge of manslaughter back in 2010. Uh, that conviction was overturned on appeal and ultimately he was sentenced to eight years in prison. Uh, he was released from prison. He violated his probation in uh, 2017. I received another four years on top for his violated, violation of probation. F four. Four. Sure, well, I mean, the reality is that most people who go through the criminal justice system don't go to prison for life. And had he been convicted back in 2010, of murder two, then maybe it would have been different. If there weren't appellate issues in the case, maybe it wouldn't have been different. That's the same in any situation, in any type of case. You know, prosecution is complicated. And uh, 
back in 2010, I have confidence that the state attorney's office did everything they could to convict him of the charge against him. He was ultimately convicted of a lesser charge, and this sentence reflected that. I can't comment on the strength of the case or any specifics. I do that in order to protect the integrity of the prosecution to make sure that due process is upheld. I'll tell you this, TPD, the Marshals Task Force, FDLE, did yeoman's work in putting this case together and identifying the murderer and to bring us to this point where we can now start the prosecution process. Again, prosecution is complicated. And the fact that we get here today never guarantees a conviction, and never guarantees an outcome. All it guarantees is that we have a fight to achieve justice for Ashley and her family. It was, uh, I, I believe he actually violated by drinking alcohol. He had a technical violation, but because of the violent nature of the prior offense, our office in 2017 uh, thought that we shouldn't overlook a technical violation, something like that, and he ended up getting an additional four years. So half of what he had originally received for the manslaughter. Can't get into the investigative work done together to apprehend the suspect. Tell you that our law enforcement agencies commonly work together to make sure that we are doing everything possible to keep this community safe. One thing that we're always asking for is a police department, and this goes really throughout the nation in law enforcement, is a community's help. I want to thank them today, giving us the tips, helping us out in this case. We work with a lot of organizations. Some of the leaders in those organizations have gone through trauma themselves. Rise up for peace with Jay Johnson and Miss Patricia. We've been on a journey with them. Our challenge with violent crime in the city of Tampa and beyond is a challenge that we're, we're going to need partners in order to bring down this, I call it, society issue with guns and gun violence. I hope that whoever's listening out there in the community we need you. We got like a thousand officers. We cannot do this job without your help and the help of organizations like Rise Up for Peace. Thank you. Any other um, information we have to provide, we'll do it after the press conference. Thank you.